Perfect Seating, neun Minuten. Hey guys, Daniel Morat hier. Nee, jetzt, jetzt, bin ich aber, jetzt bin ich wirklich mal gespannt. Hey guys, Daniel Morat hier, Professional GT Driver. And today I'm going to give you three steps to perfectly set up your seating position, steering position and pedal position to directly impact your lap time and comfort behind the simulator. The starting point for getting the perfect ergonomics on your sim rig is always with the, the base, the seat itself. That's where you're going to be sitting. For me personally, I race a Mercedes AMG GT3 and GT4 in real life. And I actually, I measured my seat in my race car just because I was very curious to know what the angles were. And I actually found out that it's a 38 degree angle on the base and a 50, uh, 52 degree angle on the back portion. Okay, jetzt wird's uh, kritisch. Wir haben uh, Winkel. And I've actually, I've set the seat up in a way where it's matching within a degree of my exact uh, race car seating position. And for me, that's so important because I want to be comfortable while I'm racing on the sim. Uh, and I wanted to emulate my real car as closely as possible. So it's always about getting the sim rig as close as possible to what's comfortable for you. Nee, nee, ich habe noch mehr, Hector. Ich hab, also ich habe wirklich noch, noch mehr. Meiner ist uh, sehr weit hoch. Also höher geht er schon nicht mehr. At the end of the day, because uh, that varies on personal preference. You can opt to use more of a prototype seating position where it will be a bit more tilted backwards or more of a GT style seating position, uh, like a road car GT seating position where it's tilted forward. Um, for, for GT3 or GT4 cars, typically the range is anywhere from uh, 32 degrees on the base um, to around 40. And then on the back, it's around, I would say, uh, 45 degrees to around 55 degrees. And Habe ich eine Wasserwaage? Wie, wie heißt denn die App? Geht das mit dem Maßband? Ist das standardmäßig äh, Wasserwaage? Hier. Ah oh ja, tatsächlich. Oh mein Gott. Also meiner, wie viel hat er? 30 Grad? Ich habe 17. Maga, und ich fühle mich schon, als wenn ich super weit hinten bin. 38, ich habe 17 an den Engels. Also an der Seite habe ich 15. Aber ich kann gar nicht mehr höher. Also geht halt wirklich nicht. Ich bin im, im letzten Loch drinne. Und oben im ersten. Also ich kann nicht schräger. Ich könnte höchstens schräger, wenn ich weiter nach unten gehe. Aber das funktioniert nicht, weil meine hintere, weil die hinten dann aufliegt, die Sitzschale. Okay. Also so weit kann ich nicht. So, um, Schau mal an der Sitzfläche. Oh, aber dazu müsste Mozi mal kurz aufstehen. Na, jetzt bin ich ja mal gespannt. Auf der Sitzfläche. Auf <lacht> also auf der Sitzfläche habe ich 84 Grad. Also ganz vorne. Und wenn ich das jetzt mal mit dem Geraden und den Dings mache, habe ich 32. Also ich komme auch ungefähr dahin. So, und ohne Polster? Also ohne Polster bin ich mal 9 Grad. <lacht> also ich ich würde diese, diese Gradzahl nicht mal ansatzweise mit diesem Sitz hinbekommen. Weil ich, also ich kann den gar nicht so weit nach hinten klappen. Und an der Lehne? Meine Lehne sind 14 Grad. 20. Ja, 14 bis 20. You can go ahead and set your seat up like that. One of the most frequent areas where you may experience some pain would be in your lower back and your lumbar section. And uh, that's so important because when you're braking, which we'll touch on in a little bit, uh, there's a lot of oh. pressure that's um, caused in your lower back because of you pressing against the pedal and it squeezing your back against the seat. If there is an air pocket or um, any space between your lower back and the back of the seat, usually that will cause a lot of extra strain and you don't want that. So typically what you would do is, um, you can see in my seat, I actually have a little uh, pad that I've added to, to reduce that gap on my lower back and that just uh, tends to support my lower back and lumbar a little bit more when I'm pushing the brake pedal hard. Das waren sie noch Q-Pedale, ja, ja. Once you get your seat position dialed in and you have the perfect angle for your personal preference, because remember, there's no right or wrong when it comes to seat angle. It's das ist eine only schöne Antwort. a personal preference in terms of what you're looking for and what schön. you want to achieve out of it. Uh, for me, I'm always looking to replicate my real race car. So I have my seat set up exactly like my car. Uh, next up, once you have your seat, make sure that your, your shoulders are pressed to the back of the seat and inside the, the shoulder rest, because this is so important. If you start so removing your, seat, uh, your, your back off the chair, then you tend to lose balance on the car. So when, you, when you're turning, you, you tend to wobble back and forth, especially if you have a direct drive wheel, it, it, will, uh, it will move you around. So you wanna make sure you're secure. This way you have the, the most balance and the most secure grip on the wheel. Mm. Second thing is, I would say uh, wheel position 
wheel distance to you and uh, the angle of the wheel itself. So for me, uh, the height and the angle go uh, hand in hand. I've ha I have my wheel set up at around 14 degrees uh, on the steering shaft. Na, jetzt bin ich ja mal gespannt. <lacht> Das kann ich gar nicht messen. Ich habe nicht so, ich mach mal, ich mach mal meine Wheelbase. Oh, also meine Wheelbase sind 2 Grad. Ne, 3. Also an meinen Schaft komme ich nicht ran. Da müsste ich mein Lenkrad abbauen für. Mal gucken, ich bin mal gespannt. Und das ist für mich schon echt viel, finde ich. Aber seine geht halt wirklich extrem weit nach hinten. Not aus habe ich gemacht. Ich lieb's richtig akkurat, ja. Ich lieb's richtig akkurat. Ja, guck mal, wenn ich jetzt meinen mein Wheelchef nehme, der ist genau gerade. Also 0 Grad, ja. 1 Grad, 2 Grad ist mein ist mein Real Chef. Also ich habe nicht mal ich habe nicht mal einen Winkel drin. And that's emulating my real AMG GT cars perfectly within a degree. Um, that's personally what I like and I set up the height accordingly where uh, when I'm gripping the wheel, I'm not putting any additional um, strain on the top or bottom of my wrist. It's actually more or less going straight from my forearm through a straight wrist onto the grip of the wheel. Um, if, if you have the wheel height too high and it's too angled, you'll put additional stress on the uh, top of your wrist. Yeah. And then on the other side, if you're too low and you're driving down down low, you'll actually put a lot of stress on the bottom of your wrist. So you want to make sure ergonomically uh, you're very straight and all your joints are lining up. Maga, wenn ich das jetzt, will jetzt mal ohne Scheiß, wenn ich das jetzt hochklappe, ne? Also wir können das ja kontrollieren. Wenn ich das jetzt runterklappen würde, so wie er, ne? Das ist jetzt mein Arm hier. So. Und das ist super, also ich würde sagen, das ist gerade. Das hier. Wenn ich das jetzt noch um 15 Grad höher machen würde, Maga, dann würde ich ja so sitzen. Also so. Und bei mir ist es ja schon gerade. Ey, habe ich das jetzt jahrelang richtig gemacht? Das ist ja richtig witzig, Alter. Also das wäre wirklich super witzig, wenn ich das jetzt richtig, trotzdem richtig habe. Nur halt für mich dann. With the steering wheel. Um, in terms of distance to the wheel, you don't want it so far away where you're coming off the seat, but you also don't want it so close where you feel like you're, you're jammed up and you can't really make the steering inputs and your elbow is hitting the side bolster in the seat. So <laughs> here. <laughs> also my wheel is here. <laughs> also ich bin locker so ein Stück weiter weg als er. So ein Stück bin ich locker weiter weg. <lacht> ja, aber wenn ich jetzt mal nur als Beispiel, ich mache jetzt mal den Sitz zurück. Also wenn ich, dass ich so, also so eine Theorie sitzt er. So. Alter, Brudi, das ist ja, Alter, das, nee. Boah, das geht ja gar nicht. Dann habe ich ja, dann sind meine Arme ja vor meinem Bauch. Also dann sind die ja gut, dann sind die Arme aber straight und hier ist fast ein 90 Grad Winkel drin, aber dann komme ich nicht mehr an meine Pedale. Alter, das ist ja, pff. Das ist ja richtig schön. Finding that perfect distance to where you're not uh, jammed up or you're not reaching is important. A great yeah. way for that to figure that out is to put your arms out while your shoulders are in the back of the seat, wrists on top of the wheel, and um, your wrist ja, should be sitting schon. right on the top of the wheel rim. That's more or less a really good guideline to getting the proper distance for the wheel. Ach so, sorry. Jetzt bin ich ja mal gespannt, wie er und seine Pedale macht. To get the pedals set up in the right spot, uh, and this one can be quite tricky because um, you need step one and step two to be correct for step three to, to fall into place. And um, starting right away from your knees, and we'll work down. You want to make sure that the pedals are close enough where your knees are more or less. Um, you don't want to be quite at like a 90 degree angle, but you want to make sure that when you're going to press the brake pedal, especially this is very important. You don't want to have a straight leg. You want to make sure you're maximizing your big muscles. So you're using your quad to press um, with the big pressure and you can reserve the rest of your strength in your leg from your calf and your ankle for the finesse pressure on the brake. That's going to give you really good trail braking and that finesse at the last stage of braking when you're coming off and balancing the car in a corner. Um, so again, no straight leg, avoid that. But you also don't want to have your knees um, up into the steering wheel or like too bent because um, and it will start to generate some knee pain as you start to press the brake. So finding uh, an angle, I would say um, you want to keep it around like a 130 degree angle or so. Um, you know, you're not 180 degrees straight legging it, but uh, just allowing yourself to have a little bit of a bend so you can get that strength from your quad when you're pressing the brake. Um, the second thing is your ankle position. If you feel like uh, you're too 
um, closed off in terms of uh, where your, your ankle and your foot's positioned pushing against the pedal face, um, it's gonna cause some shin pain. So you're gonna get a lot of pain in the front uh, part of your, mm -hmm. your shin. Um, just think about it. When, when you pull your, your toes back and your feet back, just statically, it hurts, right? It hurts in your shins. And on the other side, if you're reaching and you're trying to tippy toe it and, and push with your, the, the, the front of your toes, um, you're gonna get a lot of calf pain. So try to find that position where when you're squeezing, you're balancing that muscle front and back on your, on your lower leg. So uh, you're distributing the load across you know, all the muscles in your leg. You don't wanna just use one uh, muscle group or one muscle area. So that's, that's um, probably the best tip I can give you in terms of getting your, your ergonomics for your legs. Um, the throttle is just positioning the throttle in a way where you're not reaching all the time. I know in the real race car, sometimes uh, I've driven cars where I'm reaching a lot, and especially if you have to blip the throttle in a manual car or sequential gearbox, it can create some massive shin splints, which you, know, you really want to avoid, uh, and also calf spasms. So uh, that's typically frowned upon, but um, yeah, always start with, with uh, the knee bend, work down towards your ankle and make sure you get the pedal position. You can adjust the tilt of your pedals, either towards you or away from you, and um, and make sure that you're using big muscle groups for big pressure situations and reserve your smaller muscles and those quicker twitch fibers for finesse on the brake pedal so you can uh, hit the track, improve your lap times and have full control of your car. Another point that's super important is alignment of your hips and your knees going down towards the pedal. You can adjust the spacing between your pedals. Um, oh oh, jetzt kommen, wir zu dem, jetzt kommen wir zu den Sachen, die bei Dizzy weird sind und die jeder Zuschauer bei Dizzy hasst. To, to basically align yourself straight towards the pedal. If you feel like your, your pedals are off towards an angle, which sometimes it happens in real race cars, if you have, especially with a three pedal setup, typically the brake will be in the middle. And if you left foot brake like myself, you're more or less off to one side. But with my setup, um, and especially in the real car, I, I more or less align myself where I'm trying to hit those brakes straight on. Even if I have to shimmy my whole body over, so I'm hitting the brakes straight rather than being uh, you know, straight and angling my knees across because that can generally generate uh, knee pain, especially if you have a misalignment. So you always wanna align your joints straight onto your controls, whether it's your steering wheel or your legs. You always wanna try to find the path of least resistance. Chat, ich möchte jetzt gleich mal wieder alle triggern hier. Meine Füße, by the way. Eins geht schräg runter. Also ich bremse schräg übrigens runter, ne? Also so. Normalerweise wäre das richtig. Ich bremse aber so. <lacht> ich bremse schräg runter. Resistance and line yourself up straight with your controls. Hopefully those three steps help you guys set up your ergonomics for your sim rig. I know this is a, a hugely talked about topic and um, hopefully that's shed a little bit more light in terms of the correct seating position versus uh, just everything you hear. I think coming from a professional GT driver and being able to relay my uh, real life experience, you know, fitting in multiple different cars, having seat fits every single year, I know exactly what it takes to get that perfect ergonomic position to be comfortable and also to feel the car and be balanced within the car as best as possible. So not only will it make you more comfortable, it's gonna make you faster because you're not focused on the aches and pains. Uh, you'll be focused on hitting your marks and, uh, and dropping your lap times on track. Es ist so witzig. Es ist wirklich so witzig, dass ich durch all das Lesen trotzdem alles richtig gemacht habe. Trotz dass ich niemals das von jemandem gehört habe, sondern nur reinlesen das richtig gemacht habe. Weil ich sitze nämlich genau richtig. Ja, also ich müsste theoretisch nicht mal was äh, umbauen. Also das ist für meine Größe genau richtig. Außer, dass der Stuhl vielleicht noch ein paar Grad zurückgehen könnte. Hey dann habe ich ja mein, mein Video, was ich äh, euch gemacht habe, war ja dann gar nicht so falsch und kacke. Das Einzige, was ich halt wirklich ändern müsste, und das merke ich auch nach einem Endo-Rennen, ich muss meine, meine, ich darf keine Kupplung haben. Also auch wenn ich immer, ich weiß gar nicht, ich habe meine Kupplung noch nicht vielleicht fünfmal benutzt oder so, ich darf aber keine Kupplung haben. Weil, Alter, also ich hämmer mir meine, meine linke Arschbacke, ne, die ist wirklich im Gegensatz zu meiner rechten Arschbacke bestimmt zwei Zentimeter größer, 
weil mehr Muckis im Arsch drinne wegen Bremsen und das geht richtig in die Hüfte. Alter, aber frag mal nicht nach Sonnenschein, was das in die Hüfte geht, Junge. Uh. <lacht> <lacht>